The Sanctity of Sovereignty In every time travel movie or TV episode, there is always a subtext of the existential question, what if I had never existed? In It's a Wonderful Life, Jimmy Stewart's character George Bailey journeys to a world where he was never alive, finding out the good he did in the world affected the entire town. And, of course, in Back to the Future, Marty has to play matchmaker to his own parents to make sure he gets born. These scenarios point out the choice we made to come into a life and the subsequent anxiety about remaining. The general consensus is to be, quote, born, live a sequence of events, and then, quote, die, with all the drama, joy, pain, and pleasure compressed into a few short years. This situation of living always leads to the question, why am I here? Or, what is the purpose of my life? As if by answering, it will somehow alleviate the anxiety we have about just being. Or, we may just ignore the questions altogether, choosing to just go with the herd and live lives of faceless conformity within the existing mores of society. The thing is, the thing is, we still have to choose to conform or choose not to ask the existential questions, hoping to skate by unnoticed. If we do any questioning about existence, it becomes pretty obvious that as conscious beings, we are immortal and indestructible. Any, quote, dying we do or, quote, damage we sustain is really a choice of a way to be. Nothing can happen to us without our consent, but like those tricky software license agreements, we may be agreeing to more than we bargained for by not reading the fine print. We so often hand over our personal power to someone or something else, skipping the fine print and going all in with the flimsiest of justifications, and then get angry when we realize how cavalier we'd been with our own sovereignty. Fortunately, although it can get messy, we can always opt out of a stupid choice and step back into our power. Only the control mongers will fault you for that because they know the sanctity of sovereignty is the highest law of any land, realm, universe, or dimension. The creator wants you to be a creator too. Every experience is marinated in this question of creative sovereignty. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to allow? And how are you willing to be? You decide. Yes, sometimes it's interesting or even fun to just let go the reins and see what random stuff can happen, but it's still a choice to do that. But when we start to feel like life is happening to us, it's time to step back, reassess, and retrieve our basic sense of self and renew our vow of sovereignty. It is undeniable that certain dark forces of a psychotic demeanor with a lust for power incessantly plot and scheme to get us to violate our sovereignty. All manner of campaigns and strategies are deftly employed to get us questioning our validity. With no moral compass and an overarching imperative of the ends justifying the means, these forces care way more than you do about control and manipulation. So it's easy to be in denial that so much evil could exist. And that's what the dark is counting on. To me, the real most basic game board is sovereignty versus control. Our opponent wants to talk you out of your cherished values and get you to give them control over your life. And a surprising number of players are doing just that. Mostly out of being too nice to call them out or simply by sticking their heads in the sand. Our sovereignty is sacred. It is impossible to be a free creator without it. Otherwise, we simply go along to get along, usually with unintended consequences, overriding our situational awareness with complacency. This only leads to depravity by a reasonableness or a felicity of moral fiber. By conforming to that's just the way things are, we lower the priority of personal sovereignty and then excuse it away with all the usual cliches. 
I'm too busy. Isn't that so bad? Everyone's doing it. Who am I to say different? Etc., etc., etc. There is a joy in reclaiming power. There is an abiding peace and a flowering of love that accompanies a commitment to self. The dark ones would have you believe you are selfish and self-serving, but that is only a projection of what they are, because they can't understand that you are love, and loving yourself is the greatest power of all. And when choices are made from a space of love and followed through with loving action and a commitment to integrity, there is nothing for the dark ones to exploit. So, be vigilant. Embrace and commit to the love you are in the world. And in this way, be a beacon of peace, abundance, and humanity, uplifting the world as the Creator intended. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com